people who voluntarily come to raise their voices around the importance of taxes in building communities across this country. We have a simple message for Senator Gardner. This country has lots of pressing problems that need your attention, Senator. What problem is it exactly that this plan is designed to address? <laughs> Growing income inequality? No. Rising health care costs? No. Crumbling infrastructure? No. Rich people going to bed hungry because their taxes are too high? No. The current yes. plan gives dramatic tax reductions to the rich and profitable corporations. By 2027, the richest 1% of Americans will receive an average tax cut of more than $9,000, while the bottom three-fifths of income earners will face an average tax hike of 160. <laughs> At what cost do we provide tax relief to the wealthiest and the most profitable corporations? Reduce spending for health care through Medicaid and Medicare? No. No. Decrease investments in transportation and water infrastructure? No. no. Fewer public investments that can help families make ends meet? No. no. An increased budget deficit? No. Let me tell you something. The economics behind this plan are preposterous. They are so preposterous, in fact, that in desperation, the leaders of this tax cut for rich people movement are proposing to eliminate tax cuts if their promised revenue doesn't pan out. Yeah. Seriously. Which of the cuts do you think will be scaled back? The reduction in corporate and pass-through income rates? No. Or the individual Incre the increase in the individual standard deduction. You know, we're pretty smart here in this country, and we're particularly smart here in Colorado, and we're looking just a little bit east to our neighbors in Kansas who took this tax cut gamble and lost. Tax cuts reduce revenue. Haven't we learned that yet? It is really important, Senator. It is time to reject the failed economic theory that tax cuts improve the economy and embrace the proven notion that targeted public investments in people and infrastructure are the path to sustainable, real economic growth. Yeah. We must not be fooled by the promises of tax cuts for everyone. Using average figures in this tax cut frenzy is a little dangerous. And as we've heard today, many of the proposed changes will not mean less taxes paid, but will mean real hardship for many Coloradans. But I'm a data nerd, so sometimes generalized averages reveal insight. For example, 93% of, of the richest Coloradans will receive tax cuts of over $49,000, while middle, Colorado, or middle income Coloradans, 83% will receive tax cuts, cuts of 500. Think about what you're giving up for the potential of a small annual reduction. Do not be fooled, do not be fooled by the promise of failed economic strategies. Come on, Senator Gardner. You said you'd stand with Coloradans in this tax fight. Which Coloradans? Yeah. Those who make the most and have the most to gain from this package or the working families who will lose the investments that help them make ends meet. One more thing, Senator Gardner. Do you remember that in Colorado we have the Tabor Amendment? That measure will make it much more challenging for us to replace the revenue we lose from federal sources. Making this tax heist doubly dangerous here in the state of Colorado. Senator Gardner, pick a side. Vote no. Vote no on this tax heist. It's time. Senator Gardner. Vote.